Come to think of it, what makes it snow, hail, and sleet? Pour a glass of water and take a sip. Pretty good, isn't it? Would you believe the water you're drinking has been around for millions of years? It's true. Before any creatures were living on land, your water was part of the ocean. The water we have on Earth has been here for a very, very long time, and Mother Nature has been constantly recycling it through the water cycle. When you toss a can, bottle, or newspaper in the recycling bin, it heads to a collection center for recycling. Nature has been recycling the Earth's water supply since the beginning of time. There are four phases to the water cycle, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and collection. Evaporation occurs when the sun heats up water in lakes, rivers, oceans, and even swimming pools and turns it into water vapor or steam. The evaporated water goes into the air. Once water vapor is in the air, it rises into the atmosphere, cools, and forms clouds through a process called condensation. If you have ever poured a cool glass of lemonade on a hot day, you have probably seen condensation in action. Water forms on the outside of your glass, but it hasn't magically leaked through from the inside. The water droplets on the outside of the glass are condensed water vapor from the air. The warm summer air contains water vapor, and when it comes in contact with the cool glass, the vapor is chilled and turns back into liquid water. The next step in the water cycle, precipitation, occurs when so much water vapor has condensed that the air can no longer hold it. Clouds become heavier and heavier until eventually the water falls back to the earth in the form of precipitation. Depending on atmospheric conditions and temperatures, precipitation can arrive on earth as rain, hail, sleet, freezing rain, or snow. When water falls back to earth as precipitation, it ends up in rivers, lakes, oceans, swimming pools, rain barrels, bird baths, and lots of other places. This final step of the water cycle is called collection. Some precipitation also ends up on land. Some of this water soaks into the ground and becomes groundwater. Plants and animals use groundwater for drinking. Other groundwater runs off the land and back into streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans, and the water cycle begins again. All these forms of water don't fall out of a clear, blue sky. You need clouds. But what makes clouds? Clouds form from water or ice that has evaporated from Earth's surface, or from plants that give off water and oxygen as a product of photosynthesis. When it evaporates, that is, rises from Earth's surface into the atmosphere, water is in the form of a gas, water vapor. Water vapor turns into clouds when it cools and condenses, that is, turns back into liquid water or ice. In order to condense, the water vapor must have a solid to glom onto. This solid seed may be a speck of dust or pollen, or a drop of water or crystal of ice. Do is water vapor that has condensed back onto Earth's surface, on grass or a car's windshield, for example. Drawing of water cycle Shows how water evaporates from lakes, rivers and soil, sublimates from ice and snow, and gets into air from plant transpiration. Water vapor condensed to form clouds. Clouds move to different locations, where precipitation falls as rain or snow. In the cloud, with more water condensing onto other water droplets, the droplets grow. When they get too heavy to stay suspended in the cloud, even with updrafts within the cloud, they fall to earth as rain. If the air in the cloud is below the freezing point, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius, ice crystals form, if the air all the way down to the ground is also freezing or below, 
you get snow. However, if the layers of atmosphere within the cloud, and between the cloud and the ground, alternate between warmer than freezing and colder than freezing, you get other kinds of precipitation. Diagram of hailstones forming an accumulonimbus cloud. For example, if a snowflake falls through a warmer part of the cloud it can get coated with water, then frozen again as it's tossed back into a colder part. It can go round and round, adding more and more layers of new ice. When it's too heavy to stay up, what finally comes down is hail. If the updrafts in a thundercloud are strong enough, the hailstones can get pretty big before they become too heavy to stay up. Hailstones can range from pea size to golf ball size and up. A new record for the largest hailstone ever was set in 2010. It fell on July 23rd in Vivian, South Dakota. It was 8 inches in diameter, 18.62 inches in circumference, and weighed 1.93 pounds. That could put a real dent in your day. Hail can cause a lot of damage to buildings, cars, and especially crops. However, freezing rain can be even worse. Freezing rain occurs when the conditions are just right. Falling snow encounters, first a layer of warmer air, which melts the snowflakes, and then, just above the surface of Earth, a very cold layer, which makes the liquid water supercooled, ready to freeze up at the slightest hint of encouragement. Now, when the supercooled rain hits colder than freezing ground and objects near the ground, such as roads, trees, and power lines, snap. Just like that, the about to freeze rain turns to ice. The ice coats everything with a thin, sometimes transparent, frozen film. As more rain falls, the coating becomes thicker. The ice can become so thick and heavy that tree limbs snap and fall across power lines, or the power lines themselves just sag and sag until they snap. Clouds are the key element of the water cycle, since they are the transporters that move water from one place on Earth to another. They are also important in determining how much of the sun's energy is absorbed and trapped in the atmosphere. They are thus very important in altering the temperature of the air in Earth's surface. The warmer the air, the more water it can hold. The warmer the oceans, the faster water evaporates from them. Surface winds also increase evaporation. Notice that after a rainstorm, the road dries faster if it is windy, and the more water in the air, the more the sun's energy is trapped, making things still warmer.